Hi, thank you for showing your interest in the webinar series in which we are covering all the building blocks of the cloud. In today's webinar, we are going to cover introduction to serverless. As you know that in the previous webinars, we have covered all of these topics, which starts from cloud computing production, virtualization, containers, SDS, SDN, and much more. You can always go back and watch the recordings of the previous webinars. In today's webinars, we are joined with Avinash Dalvi, who is a full stack developer and an AWS community builder. He has more than 12 years of industry experience. Today, he is going to share all about serverless, in which we would look at, first of all, what is serverless? Then we are going to dive into why we need serverless and how we can implement serverless for our use cases. So with that, I would like to hand over to Avinash, who would take us through the serverless journey. Your sir. That's how it will work, right? So this will be we cover that why that is necessary and what are the aspect of the necessity of serverless. Then uh, what is serverless also? Many of you might know about it, but we'll have a different type. Look into the different way of how what serverless will be and where the serverless can be used. Like what are the use cases will be there and what kind of product we can build from using the serverless that we will talk about it. And then uh, we'll discover some of the uh, serverless services offered by the AWS, which we, and based on that, what you can build also, we'll talk about this in that part. And I'll give a small demo uh, about like, how do you can create a CRUD API, which is like a, a creation of user profile and the edit view like this using the serverless, that is AWS Lambda and DynamoDB and API Gateway uh, on that part. Okay, so... Let's go to the next one. Yeah. So this is like a necessity of serverless, right? So I think the, uh, see, I think um, um, many of you are currently working or not working, like, but let me just give a, a little bit uh, earlier. Like when you are working with a server, you have to keep your server 24 by seven alive, right? right? Otherwise, if your customers are coming online anytime, you should your server should be able to serve that request. And that's what will always be demand from any of the website owner or any of the mobile app owner also, whatever, like whether it is a, a website, mobile app, or any other background service also, they need to serve the 25 or 7 the server. And uh, ma majority of drawback of the server uh, technologies is that like you need to pay even if you're not using for the, or even if the server is not serving the request, that was the major drawback of the server. Okay. And wherever that is going to be used, you will end up paying the more money. And that was not useful or for the many of the initial startup founder or the many of the who are going to do the creating some prototyping or right because they are going to do they will have only like one two user 100 user or maybe a thousand user more than that for that also they need to start paying a lot of money to just to keeping the server alive to whenever the request are getting uh, up right to how to avoid that that will be helping by the server let me talk about that like how it can be server like but what is the one of the pain point of necessity of a server layer Second pain point is like responsible for the uptime and maintenance of the server. It's correct one because when you're having a server, right, you need to keep that up and always be running on that. I and mean, whatever the maintenance, the patching work, or even if you require anything, right, that need to be, you will be responsible because you are having the cloud account and you need to be responsible. Even if you're on premise also, you need to be uh, always uh, available to keep that server alive and up and running, okay? That also one of the pain point in the server, te server technology will be there. Sec third will be like applying the security updated on the server, like, because you are owning the server, you are having the EC2 machine, or you are having the particular Google machine, right? All this will be, you need to manage the security under it. Cloud or AWS provider or Google GCP, they are not going to talk about that. Like, okay, I will update or we will update a security patch. You need to update a security patch. You need to keep updating your Linux, Windows, 
operating system always to manage this or whatever so this is another level of headache also a uh, particular cloud owner need to be taken care of in that part right and uh, least, last but not least one it's like a scale up and scale down need to manage it you might aware about it like whenever you are into the one user on the website and starting from the one user to the 1000 10000 one lakh millions right your server should be able to capable of up and scale down right and that also you need to always manage by yourself adding you might be adding the load balancer to that load balancer is one of the services which you manage the load and distribute load across the particular uh, machines but that also you need to manage it sometime particular memory or ram it is not sufficient to serve the request you need to go there and manually change thing there so these are all of the pain point of the having the server like server technology way and this is going to be help the server less okay why server is important and whenever these are pain points are there and you, uh, right the always another things we have going to be help out in that part and these are the necessity of server less so let's talk about like now what is serverless okay i think with very humorous if we talk about a humorous way like serverless mean no server uh, yes like many people when you early early start right when people know about serverless means like serverless there is no server okay but people know already they know that part but kind of like yes see it is like uh, it's a, it's like a what you can say serverless is like there is a server behind it but you are not going to manage that part so it is like a server implies like no ops or no operation approach where developer don't need to manage any backend server or any infrastructure also they should be all focus on the only a developing the code deploying the code and whatever changes you need to manage it, that should be right apart from what security patches are there what operating system are going to use it how much they are going to scale and scale up developer should not be able to worry about that part that's how the serverless we talk about it the serverless is a kind of execution approach where the cloud provider like aws azure and uh, the google cloud provider responsible for managing that executing the piece of the code by allocating the runtime resources and time resources like whatever scale up will happen it will attach or when ever scale down is will detach that particular resource and that's the headache they will manage it only they charge for the amount of resources used to run so serverless will it like a it adapt the pay per use model so whatever the resources you will use only you have to pay for it if the resources is not getting you you will not uh, uh, like pay for it that's how serverless very beneficial in terms of uh, kind of thing so probably like so so it's like one of the one of the computing technology or uh, definitions right refer to the a paradigm of the building and running the application without the managing the underlying the server with the serverless and the cloud provider abstract away the server okay means that it will keep you a layer between you like a developer and the cloud so you need to worry don't worry about it and it manage the runtime scaling capacity planning from the developer and developer can focus on the application code business logic providing the handle providing the server of scaling monitoring part under the hood and that's how it work but sometime sometime what happens serverless mislead the like since server are still involved but developer perspective there are no visible server to manage the cloud provide handle the server okay and this model allow a developer to do the deployed multiple type of different different applications kind of workflow like even driven uh, auto scaling function api based like rest based api you can develop like the worrying about it for chapter that's how that the serverless works okay go to the next So I have kept here the example of pizza uh, photo here just to be very clear, like very real time a basis how it can be uh, right right. So when I talk about the ordering, like it's example of when you are ordering the pizza, okay, you decide okay I want this topping. Uh, what will the base will be? I need a uh, cheese, bread, bread. What type of size you will have? Small, medium, large, exactly right. Pizza delivery time like which is I want immediate or schedule something like that. these are the very exact uh, scenario but you know you are not worry about like how that pizza is getting baked 
how will be the pizza is getting delivered in from the dominoes or pizza or whatever it is right so you only worry about okay this is my need you give me that need once it deliver you have to target that's how exactly the server is going to be work out the example of like topping will be your ram storage okay your base will be like which programming language you are going to use it because in serverless you are not bound to use a specific language i I'll, i'll talk about like i mean i talk about it with offering right you will get to know that okay how that beautifully gives the empowerment to developer to move to the any languages so whichever they want or whichever particular uh functionality support this language is okay that's how exactly the which uh, programming language will be based on that and similarly like a small medium large like which type of instance you want to use it that you can use it and like a pizza delivery time whether it's immediate or schedule based on your execution time so how much execution time is required for particular the task or particular that code need to run whether it's a 2 minute 1 minute 60 second or 15 minute based on that you can define that particular service or bit or or me piece of code to decide on that part so it is like a modular exactly like a pizza slices so you can create a small small model and deploy it and the small model can be talked to each other or can be talked to each other by using the event driven by api calling or by just handshaking okay but they are working silo in that when their work is done they will be in idle whenever there is a demand they will be you know the bomb state like that it exactly work the order in pizza right okay so let let's now um, now we understood that like, sir, what is serverless right and how it can be serverless in the over real like examples also that and there are many many real time examples are available like we were you can anything five of the what is serverless is there the more 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 part is like where serverless can be used okay i'll take I'll, i'll spend more time on this slide because that's the more important part like which where we can serverless can be used okay so as i said serverless is a piece of code means that even if you can run as a one line of code as a serverless function because in serverless in most of the time it exactly work as a a function as a service that is a fast okay where your function is the empower to do that particular things okay and that's how it actually work so it can be one line of code or it can be 100 line of code or more than that also it doesn't matter right? like in um, in in a model view controller right and we see pattern there will have a lot of line of code will be there and each model will be different different way up there so server like adapt the another part of it like, uh, being a, a microservice also where each microservices do the role there independently and they are not touching each other code base only they are handshaking between that and that exactly work so this can where we can use a uh, particular that part right the first thing which we can like where there is a unpredictable workload or required a quick scaling okay when now take example of netflix okay netflix is also serverless Okay, earlier they were and it's purely a microservice basis. Earlier when they started, and there is a good articles available in the uh, Google. Like you can find out about it, how they move from the server to serverless microservice based architecture and what kind of speed they are now able to manage it just because of serverless, right? Because when they started, when they started, they were not having the much of, right? but since they started public like popularizing, right? They started getting a lot of load and requests on it. Right? Even their just profile. page was getting a lot of heat and they were not able to manage that part so they wanted to have that particular things to be having with skill where though whether i mentioned in the first slide right you do not need to manage a manual upscaling and downscaling in the serverless part you just have to tell okay this is the my uh, thing is required specific api required this is the time execution time this is a ram it need to add that can be a manage a millions or billions of requests without having manual headache on that part so this is the kind of netflix was moved to that particular serverless microservices architecture where they were able to manage once they moved to the serverless with the unpredictable load and now everyone know about like how much like load currently the netflix are managing i think 
daily basis people are watching a lot of the web series a lot of the movies and all this and okay that's how exactly it works so see majorly it like a uh, whenever there is the so when you're building any product or when you're working on any of the a company product or company services like think about like when you know that something is unpredictable workload is a demand of the particular services or in the product right yes serverless is the right choice for that that one because there you can have a more control to a developer and then the uh, other thing the infrastructure can be managed by the cloud server this is one of the example of netflix there are many more uh, successful example are there uh, with the unpredictable workload how serverless are using it second will be the very most famous one like the, the rest behavior yeah. so it like whenever you're building the mobile app or whenever you be building the any rest based web application or website right is always useful to use the serverless okay because serverless is a like they work on like functional service right or micro services so as i said you can write one line of code also and you can write the 100 line of code also similar like that so while developing the rest based api it always useful as serverless and because example now example is like mm, take example of of a uh, netflix is that okay in netflix has a multiple rest api like one is a c or uh, like edit user or view profile of user one will be uh, get my watch list okay one will be what my download page is there similarly like the multiple rest api will be there so each api will have a individual role to perform it and there it will the will have a microservice serverless can be helpful there because once that job is performed they need, might require so it, it like view profile might not require much load that can be handled by maybe uh, 0.25 gb of ram view profile uh, similarly similarly if you want to see that watch the movie that required a more gb of ram maybe 8 gb or 16 gb of ram depend upon that workload of that part so accordingly you can designate the respective a uh, memory to that particular rest api and that's how the rest api can be used uh, or most uh, most like helpful to use server related technology around the technology there in rest way third one is like cron job or schedule down okay earlier what you should do right we for the just for running the cron job uh, we might be you should do that in the same server you should set up the cron job or uh, the headache of the setting up the cron job in the same server sometime what happen cron job demand has a frequency of hitting the one min- every minute or every five minute every 10 minute the main actual website go- performance got hampered i have seen this uh, like you were running on the one of the e-commerce uh, website and the e-commerce wish to have the one cron job to fetch every day the stock of the particular website and we were have earlier we were installed the cron job and the website could not one server itself and suddenly when the particular discount offering uh, promotion was there many customers are jump on the website and they were not able to Uh, visit the website itself because they are fetching the five zero four eight time out there and all this part. The cron job are taking lot of the memory spaces and other the website request was not able to get that memory uh, allocation. And then we move to that particular cron job to the other server by replicating another server. So it is like I'm paying more money to just to keep a cron job and website on a different different server and similar kind of thing, right? So I maintain two different code base also. That's the level of headache I have to manage. But that can be solved by using the serverless technology, where you can have a separate separate cron job assigned to the separate separate microservices using the serverless, and that can be done independently work on that. So this is one of the another good example of having the serverless can where can you use it. So if you're working on a cron job or any scheduled tasks like right back up server back up back up um, or e-commerce basis like keeping a stock or updating the tracking of the order all this part right that can be used in a serverless. Fourth one is a very another another beautiful example event. I'm big fan of the event driven architectures like uh, so event driven architecture like like it like okay uh, it like a pops up model. When I say pops up model like it, it, there will be one publisher, there will be one subscriber. So they don't know, they don't talk. They just okay okay. I'm doing my work. Once my work is done, I'll trigger the notification. To whoever is subscribed to that notification, they will start their work. Then my work is done. That's how exactly work. So event driven, I feel like they will trigger the event. Okay, my work is done. Next, 
uh subscribe next event i should capture that particular things and start doing the work okay that uh, kind of model or this kind of work for also we will use it other way and it's very very famous nowadays in the you when you are building the event even architecture or kind of you the serverless it's very very helpful to you the animal so i can give an example of that how it even even work can so we have built one one of the product startup product car uh, which was the business application business loan model uh, product okay it was having the multiple stages like sign up then the um, kyc fetching then the civil score fetching in different different stages were there all different stages were managing with the serverless just by the event driven what is the event the each stages will have one event and each event will done it will move to the next event and one next event is done it will move to the next next event like that you used to do that part and that's how exactly the event driven architecture has to work so that's how you should be able to use it so keep in mind that when you are work, going to work on any event driven architecture serverless will be the first option to look into that one okay next one is like experimenting and prototyping i uh, it is like a building mvp recently like i have given one of the talk on one of the aws community day in pune about how the you can build mvp with serverless with the laser cost uh, other part right yes it is very very helpful when you are in early stage of startup when you are um, early stage of product building or even if you are not um, building a startup but you are working on your idea something or you are building your products right you are always worried about okay a lot of money will go from my pocket if i choose going to deploy a particular application on cloud and then i have to save the money because i don't know whether this idea will going to work or not all this part right that things will be there worry will be there so it is like when you are doing any experiment in building any researches or prototyping right serverless is the best option to do it because serverless go on the pay as a go model and many serverless many serverless services are given or some of like have some free tiers also where we can utilize a lot of save a lot of money also i talk about that uh, in next couple uh, slide on the front which are those are on there so this is like a kind of another example of where you can use serverless right so i always suggest like oh, all the startup founder like to when they are working on a prototype when they don't know how it's going to be some like um, scale it up all this part they should go with the building the mvp using the server data technology by using the have many microservices this architecture next one is the data processing and analytics yes because data processing required not always happen a uh, continuous 24/7 it is the based on a demand basis so we data processing means i like them pulling the data from one resource and injecting the data into other resource that kind of processing or maybe pulling data reading the data and then working applying the your machine learning algorithm on that part right that required a lot of a uh, lot of lamb ram also but not always to have to keep running on that part there also a serverless can be used because there you can save a lot of cost also and it will be very helpful to have a scaling very well way that's how the data processing and analytics can be used as a serverless part and along with that there are many many more are the use cases are are there where you can use the serverless so there is nothing like that you where you can't use the serverless everywhere everywhere you can use the serverless technology and you can build build your product build your robust product and scalable product using serverless yeah i think thanks abnas for putting up all these points together right so uh, i i did not realize that uh, i mean there are a lot of uh, useful things what we can do is serverless so i thought of only few things are possible but uh, this kind of uh, opens up a lot of options uh, or at least uh, to kind of look at servers in different way at least from my perspective yeah so if any of you have been using serverless other than this uh, do comment on the uh, on the chat there so that uh, we can learn more from that uh, yeah i think uh, it's going pretty good abhinash yeah let's let's uh, carry forward yeah let's carry on yeah thank you so that's about the use cases of like and there are many i think i would like to know that if anyone know to any more use cases uh, and the dependency said that put in the comment we love to see that okay what are the different use cases are there now let's talk about the uh, what uh, discover like a kind of thing what aws provide as a serverless okay uh i'm i'm uh, i this slide slide is one of my favorite slide because when i say serverless is exactly the lambda itself like that's why i put serverless is equal to lambda okay because 
the server layer started gaining the lot of the attention when the AWS launched Lambda in 2014. And uh, I was the, like good to know that when I work on a startup, I was uh, proud to know that we were in the one of the three, four per per four member to start using the Lambda and server layer technology and build a whole the and the financing application based model using the server list. So yes, but there are many more other server list services provided by AWS. But whenever I always talk about in the mind, in the server list, what AWS provides, Lambda is the first name comes in the mind to use that. And by using Lambda, you can build a lot of things without even paying single money also. That's how exactly the benefit of this uh, part are there. So the, 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 the reason after the Lambda, there are many other like Azure also release the function, Google Cloud also release the, uh, I think another like, Google Cloud function like that. And after that, it popularized very, very well as a fast, like the function as a service. And now after, after that, many, many different, different providers are there. And after the kind of thing in the Kubernetes also, like, it's very famous, like using the fast as a services kind of thing. Like, I think independent, we'll talk about it after my session, but that's how it exactly uh, works. So serverless is equal to Lambda. And there are many other serverless technology like this are the provider. Okay, like it, when I say serverless, like it's not about only where the backend is there as serverless. Serverless means that you no need to worry about, as I mentioned, you need to worry about what happening behind the bank. Only do your work. Okay, so the API gateway, AWS API gateway is one of the serverless uh, companies that CloudFront has to come in that. S3 bucket is coming that S3 bucket for the using for storage. Okay, when if you want to store uh, files or any media, even S3 provide a static web hosting. When I say static web hosting, right? You can to, you can uh, host your static HTML pages also or SPA that is single page application like Angular based or React based applications also. DynamoDB serverless, RDS are there because you are not worry about that part, right? You are you are just okay deployed your database and part. But the, another beautiful part of the serverless is uh, the AWS Lambda, AWS Stay Function, SNS, SQS, and Event Bridge. So I'll not go into details that, that you can read on the, what is that part, but AWS, uh, Amazon SNS is the notification services used to build a event driven architecture. And SQS is the, another queuing mechanism where you can push a data into the queue to start using the queuing data. So it is like pulling the data from the queue and process by that. It, okay, that's how the exactly work. And the state function is like, if you want to build a proper a flow diagram based uh, flow workflow that you can use the AWS state function without even adding the multiple if case into your code. So if you have a one function running on it, you can write down on like if case of full, full of the workflow and can build even a state function. That's how exactly work. And event breach is to build uh, your cron base, cron job base um, services. Like if you want to build any cron job base, uh, like uh, business logic, you can use the event breach and can schedule the particular Lambda okay, frequency on that part. I can build accordingly. That's how it's like very short glimpse about the, what AWS is offered as the AWS services. Okay. Uh, there are many more are there. Uh, I can I can share that some of the links in the chat section of the session. You can go through on that part. So now let's talk about and work out like demo, right? Like today demo. So I'll just showcase the how a demo it look like, how the record acquisition can be used fully here. So let me stop my screen here. So meanwhile, do you do you kind of, I just put down a, a point in the chat right now. Uh, can you list down an app or website name which you use uh, or you think which it which uses um, the server list, right? So I think there's a typo, but that's fine. But hope you got the gist that uh, whatever app you may think, right? Or what you're using, right? And is it using serverless? If you know, please put down or um, or you think that it may be serverless. So anybody want to just 
uh, put down an app name. So I am pretty sure that uh, I use this um, tool a lot, which can convert MP4 to MP3 files, uh, something like that, uh, which which kind of would be using serverless because uh, when the load is going to come, uh, it's going to convert MP4 to MP3 kind of a thing, right? So that's I think would be serverless. So if you think uh, you have an idea, you can put. Oh, chat GPT serverless. Okay, yeah, maybe most likely because you make a request and then it would kind of do it. Yeah. So I'm not confident, but of course it may be using it. So if you have a study that it's using serverless, uh, do share as well, uh, Mohammed. Yeah. Anyone else want to just put down something? Uh, bank statement analyzer, correct. Yes. Image to text, right, right. Okay, I think let, that, let them come in, guys. Uh, I mean, as you can go ahead with the demo. Uh, meanwhile, whatever you can think of an app name, please put them on the chat. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the kind of one of the example uh, which is available on GitHub. I'll uh, you can sh uh, I'll share the link in the chat box also. You can give it a try on that. Very easy to use it. It used based on the Terraform. Terraform is a uh, kind of uh, infrastructure service provider where you can. Um, deploy the application in the uh, AWS side. So already uh, the AWS credentials are configured into my search system, but if you wanted to configure AWS credential, you can just uh, go to the AWS official website and search for the uh, AWS credential configuration using the, uh, under your command line one, and you can find the, the, the right documentation and part. So let's, I just, I think it's already, you can just copy this one and go to your terminal. Yeah, so I think already I'm into the CRUD API. You can just clone the perspective that get one and then just go to the C8 one. So what is there inside, right? It is there inside like, multi, uh, it is create. Uh, let's go, to, I'll walk through on that part. It has a multiple APIs like create profile, read profile, update profile, delete profile, and health of the call. So health is like to check the API server is running up and on all this part, right? That is exactly work. So this is like a building a CRUD application using your server -aid. and in this demo we are going to use a aws lambda a dynamo db and the aws api gateway we'll show you in that in a aws console of how it exactly look at and they're going to use the logo lang as a platform a terraform and aws cli for that and if you want to do test in a local environment you can just use the docker and dynamic local image and that can be done so the first step is like git clone and then go to the cd of that part and you have to depend on uh, install dependency of the Go by using the Go mod download. You, you might throw the error Go model is not there. You just have to uh, go to the Go website, Golang website, and download your respective package and install the Go language in your machine. And then you can run this Go mod uh, download command. Right? Once you've done that, you just have to do the make deploy command that will start doing the deployment to the one. You can see here it is starting doing this part. Now we can see in same time. Uh, depends on how, uh, I'm uh, my screen is visible, right? Yeah, it's visible. Can you increase the font size, but yeah, the terminal that should be good for terminal. This is fine. This is fine. Terminal, terminal, terminal. Let me check out. You can do a shift plus plus, I think, shift control plus plus, shift command plus plus. Wait, let me check out. Yeah. Yeah, this is fine. This is fine. This is fine. Yeah. Okay. So it's now already started working and see that. And same time, uh, we'll just go to the API Gateway console and Lambda. We can start seeing the details there. Okay. I account it. Yeah, you can see the CRUD API default gateway is already created by 2021, this one. Okay, and same time, we'll just go to the, let me open the camera. Check out it. Yeah, it is already compared here. You can see here, and the base URL also there. What is the API base URL? You can you have to use it as the testing. 
uh, here you can see that okay, CRUD API, the code is there. Because of this Golang, it will, will not be able to see the code base here, but it is pointing to the image, go runtime management for like, so this is like a, a Lambda uh, console where you can see that this one Lambda, it is pointing to API gateway and you can, you can configuration. Configuration here, okay, what kind of memory you are required, what is the ephemeral storage will be there, what my time out for particular thing will be there. Okay, and this kind of environment variables you can mention is here, what will be there when you a variable, what VPC network I'm going to use it, all things can be configured in the server layer. So as a developer, you just have to do the configuration, that's it. Everything can be managed by them. That's how exactly you work it. Similarly with the gateway also, right? Gateway is already created here. So you can see that the you can endpoints are created. It is pointing to Lambda integration, it's a CRUD API here, all are there. So you can go to the here. When you're making a changes, you just have to deploy the API and do the respective things like. But currently it is not by done by the UI from the way, it's done by the Terraform. It's like a all one example is there. But you can go through the, the official documentation of AWS how exactly can be done. Now let's uh, see that the API demo go to the this API profile. I just got six one. It looks correct. API profile. Yeah. So in, if you go to the here, the create profile in the page in the GitHub, you will find the example here. What example you can test it here. This is the data helmet format, like first name, last name, address, and email. Just copy and put it in the Postman collection here, and that can be created. If you send a request, it will start creating. Do you change the URL there of the server or did already? Yeah, just a second. I think V1 is required there. Profile. And yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a profile already created. So I got this URL API from the, my terminal here. It is a base URL. I, you can get it from the API gateway also. You can go to the API gateway. Here the API is. Click on API stages. Here so you can get the, the same API name. And along with that, you have to just map the V1 slash profile for the create profile. So similarly, you will have uh, another, uh, let me just update this here and get one. I'll update this profile ID, new profile ID into here. Thing the, the typo is in the URL Amazon dot this twice is there. Can you go back to the URL there? Yeah, yeah. that was there was a typo. Yeah, it was yeah correct. Get to remove. Uh, yeah, cool. The copy pasting mistake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the, exactly the gate thing will also work. So similarly, you can test it others uh, update profile, delete profile, and health checkpoint and also there. And you will try on this. Um, you will get to know like, but you need to have a prerequisite the AWS account on that part, uh, and that you can use it. Like once if you start doing it and immediately destroy also, it will not get any charge on that part because AWS Lambda provide a one million request per month for each Lambda free. Okay, and while testing it, you will not cost that one. So you will not be I mean, charged in the purpose for that one and testing it. So once we're done with the demo, you can just run the command called make destroy. It will start destroying the whole architecture, what you have built so far. It will ask me to confirm it, like these are the things are there. Yeah, it'll ask me to do yes to destroy all. So I'll just click on the destroy yes. You can see now in here also, you will not 
the any API gateway between one already. It is sorry. Yeah, nothing is there. It's already deleted from here. Even if you go to the Lambda also. Yeah. It is not the CRUD API is not deleted. It is not deleted now. That's how exactly the destroy can even happen. So we can give it a try on this demo and we will be able to see that okay, how exactly the serverless can be deployed using AWS Lambda, DynamoDB, and API gateway. Similarly, you can build a lot of the REST API based mobile life REST API and any web based REST API. So uh, is there any like limit like uh, how long the Lambda function can run, right? Is there an upper limit for that? Yes, yes. So you have to define. So I can give an example of here, uh, which is a process S3 object. If you go to the configuration, so based on the what kind of code block you are going to run it, you have to give a timeout to the respective run. So it's based okay. on the okay what kind of expensive operation you are performing, based on, can define it. Maximum timeout, it is support, I think, around uh, 15 minutes max, I think. Okay. Yeah, it gives us up to 15 minutes max. Okay. That's how exactly it works. Early when they started, it was having only five minutes. Now they're increased to 15 minutes on that part. So you can have a second to me a minute. Like that's why you can have a play. And based on the memory also, right? Suppose if you have more memory, like more expensive operation, which cannot be completed by 15 minutes, but if they're adding the more RAM, it can faster your operation and can cover mm -hmm. the minute one. Day. That currently that Got can it. increase the memory. Yeah. Okay, okay. Fine. Understood. Um and um also, uh, now let's say if I could not finish my function, right? How would you verify that? For example, if I'm, uh, I wrote uh, some function that could not finish in that given time, what's what's going to happen? Is it going to give me some kind of a thing that it could not finish, or how do I debug it in general? Yeah, so you can you know, the, the, the debugging part, like you can have a trigger also. So what happened, right? So Lambda has a triggering mechanism also. It all logs go to the cloud, uh, cloud watch. Mm -hmm. So let me show you monitor under the monitor. You can see here the CloudWatch log where you can see that what happened with Lambda. But Lambda most of the time, like there are like, multiple Lambda also, synchronous and asynchronous. So mm -hmm. it is like asynchronous Lambda also can keep running on the part. And you if you want any notification to your Slack or uh, your mobile number or email, right? Whether mm -hmm. this Lambda finished your job or not, mm -hmm. you can add into the destination part where you can add a SNS trigger. About mm -hmm. talking like in SNS, you can give a mode of communication, what communication you wanted to have it. So it's like a failure mechanism or surface mechanism accordingly. So if like for example, if you're running one cron job and you need to know that okay, this cron job has finished its job or not, or what kind of data record has been done, you can select the destination once this fun finished, right? It can trigger the next uh, action. That can be a SNS here. You can see asynchronous information or even so mapping on failure, on success, select the SNS mm -hmm. topic, select the respective SNS, and the SNS will have that respective communication mode. Either it can be an email, SMS, or if you want to have a Slack alert, op genie alert, or email alert, that can mm -hmm. help on failure. Okay. Understood. There's a question in the chat right now how to overcome the cold start problem in Lambda. Yeah, at this moment, that, that will be still the challenges in the Lambda part. Uh, but uh, I think I have not come across kind of similar issue most of the time, like, right? But yes, that is the, another challenge in Lambda has that cold start part. So just to kind of say that cold start means that uh, mm -hmm. you want some data to be there, which is not there right now, correct? And you have to get the data first to kind of perform a given operation. Correct. correct. Because when you are not using a Lambda, your Lambda is in an idle state. Uh, so for to whenever the new request comes, right, they need to have that warm up time to get up that services and then serve it. So there is a small million seconds of the delay will be there sometimes. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if you're continuously running the thing, that can be run completely. But when you're nothing is running, that time it will be have that cold thing. And that still is the uh, like struggle. But I believe with the Lambda thing, we can connect to a database. That's not a problem at all, right? We can yeah, connect yeah. to a database and perform our operations, whichever are yes, required yes, yes, there. Yes. So in the, cloud, in the code itself, you can define that particular thing. See, Lambda has another benefit of that. Lambda has a multiple triggers also. So 
when you want to trigger the application like example right i have built a project a project called process s3 object so whenever i am uploading the file okay pro start processing it so it like example of you are working on uh, one loan based application where you upload your aadhar now mm-hmm. start uh, processing the aadhar and data convert to image to text right so once mm-hmm. that file upload to s3 bucket immediately you can trigger the lambda without even any manual iteration from your application it will listen to the s3 bucket uh, thing when your new object come it will trigger the lambda and we start processing the data and do it everything in a background without even knowing what happened and automatically the next stage the data will be available this is your other number name other number all this will be there so similarly like we have built a product um, uh, one model called bank statement analyzer where the whenever the customers are uploading a bank statement automatically go to the s3 bucket and it process in the background before it going to next step itself like it's available before that step like without okay. doing that part that's how the background process work so it has a multiple right. trigger point like you can have a multi- this lambda can be used for multiple trigger points so i'm just thinking of trigger points are there correct just thinking of something for example let's say if you s3 bucket to upload uh, i don't know docker image it can analyze and then tell us it is a vulnerability or not i just correct. think that can also possible there like similar correct. so it it it, it do the lot of listening part and you can write the code piece of code by using the any languages and that language can give you a piece of vulnerabilities or is are there okay very good okay okay thank you we'll continue actually i can ask questions more but yeah we can continue yeah yeah actually, I'm, i'm done with the demo i think we'll uh, happy to get take a question from you can have that part like guys any any questions you have uh, i have one question with the communities and that i'll let, that i'll take it right now after, after this but any questions you can you can you have uh, please feel free to uh, bring them up right now with respect to the serverless uh, what uh, presentation what uh, avinash has given Yeah, I got a question. Hello. Yeah, good. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah, my question is related to that. Like when we talk about the serverless, like uh, uh, you have given uh, some brief also, but what is the right way to choose the lambda? Because lambda can do other activity what uh, SNS can do and what the event bridge can do. Then at what point of time, uh, like you have given that integration and business layer, mm-hmm. at what point of time we can choose this different component? Okay. And as you mentioned, like you have got an URL, could you just share that part? Uh, which uh, demo URL? Not demo URL. Like you mentioned that you have got some reference material. With the help of that, you can decide uh, which component to use in the uh, real time. Okay. Uh... <laughs> Can you repeat your question? Like last last statement, I I will. Yeah. Uh, my question is like uh, when in the given scenario, uh, I find that with the lambda I can do all the operation. Like we have got event bridge, SNS, uh, SQS, a step function. Hmm. Then why to use the other component if I drive the same uh, things with the lambda? Okay. Okay. I'll 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 take the example of part right. See, these are the different. Like what SNS do? SNS is a notification manager, notification services, where they will have a pop sub model. So SNS will have a one subscriber and one publisher. Okay, Lambda can do that part, but Lambda will have only to do that. Okay, this is the my job. Okay, that's all. The how the microservices work or any event driven architecture work, right? So each component will have their own role to perform. It. If they are being to the doing everything. then again we are going back to the mvc model only okay that's how the difference between the microservice model and mvc right mvc uh, has the everything in burden by one model only one code base only okay but when you are doing uh, this microservice based serverless using it right we have to keep it a clean architecture and keep it a, a very independent role for each part so lambda is been for the building or creating a business logic or writing the uh, do things right uh, which which can which cannot be done by sns sns can only listen and sub- publish but sns cannot run a piece of code okay sqs cannot run the piece of code sqs is only for queue mechanism so that queue cannot be done by lambda so if lambda wanted to build one email notification service now what they will do whenever there is a particular operation finished send that notification to the sqs queue 
and the sqs key will be keep adding the multiple line, line and there is another lambda will be keep listening to the queue which will keep popping up the the that particular uh, notification and sending the email so see one lambda can do that but keeping it a separate separate work for each lambda will have a good clean architecture of the server place and microservices there that's how exactly work it so of course this is this is like common thing right uh, you need to uh, kind of uh, do a bit of uh, kind of not let's say background but i think uh, there are, there can be multiple solutions but choosing the right one for the given use case uh, is something which is which comes uh, as a kind of um, um, experience thing and try it out right so that that's what that's what i would say uh, there okay uh, so let me take that next part of the uh, the part about the kubernetes and uh, serverless right and then there was a question which which we'll take uh, let me just get the question first uh, where was that question yeah okay let me share my screen okay so uh, one thing with respect to the uh, uh, the kubernetes right so as you know that uh, kubernetes uh, runs containers right or pods uh, what we call them right now um, uh, so idea is simple that right whenever a request comes uh, you are again going to have uh, deploy an app running inside the pod or the container what you have there right and of course it would be listening on some kind of uh, endpoint and as the request comes up you are just going to take that request and then the container would uh, or a, a pod would be created for example um i would be kind of publishing some endpoints with respect to my serverless um, tools what i'm using right and as soon as the some submit happens on that particular url correct i'm just going to call the respective uh, pod uh, or the container behind the scene uh, perform my stuff uh, and then get rid of the particular pod so as we know that running these pods uh, cost, right? Um, and if you run less number of pods, you're going to pay less, right, in general. So that is that is how it is. So there are solutions available like Knative, uh, which, which can kind of help us build the serverless and the event-driven applications on Kubernetes. The, uh, of course, there are many benefits of the Knative, but one of it is, right, you don't require to run any pod ahead of time so as soon as the request comes you run the pod and then you continue and then you kind of come back to the zero pod so for example today the request comes i would create five pods and once my workload is finished once my work is over i kind of come back to the zero pods there so i no need to kind of run a pod all the time to uh, serve my request uh, so um, i'll just have to have an endpoints and then the remaining things would be uh, taken care so now the question is what is the difference between kubernetes and serverless right so kubernetes as you know it runs pods right and now these pods uh, are not just to serve the serverless they are like um, a regular applications uh, which you do and uh, they are not bound by a given uh, kind of a say time limits and all those things so um, kubernetes pods can run any kind of application what you may have with serverless uh, we have we are deploying the specialized uh, pods or think about you're just creating the signatures right or you can say you have the respective images and the endpoints to connect with as a request comes up you take that image create a pod and perform the stuff so uh, serverless is a part of or you can serve uh, serverless by kubernetes but of course it can do more than uh, what serverless can do right um, so hope that answers your question. Um, there is some more inputs uh, from Avinash. Please go through them. Uh, so there are other uh, projects also out there which supports a serverless on Kubernetes, like one is Fission, and then we have uh, OpenFast. So there are many different projects we have which which we can use to deploy serverless on top of uh, Kubernetes. Um, so that's kind of a brief intro, but of course, maybe we can dig deep into further if we kind of uh, decide to do more webinars on these topics separately. Uh, so let's see if there are any other questions. Um, then, um, what is the difference between HPA and Knative? Okay. 
so again k native is specialized to build the serverless thing right so hpa is to hpa for uh, for people to know hpa is uh, horizontal pod auto scaling correct so whenever uh, your app uh, need more resources or like for example think about um, you are today getting 100 requests per second and one of the pod is able to serve those 100 requests per second but somehow because of there was an ad on your website or on a newspaper now there are uh, 10k requests per second now the same single pod cannot acts cannot handle all the uh, the 10k requests per second right so what we'll do is with the help of hpa what we'll configure a trigger saying that um, there is um, uh, there is more load coming uh, on this endpoint or you can simply put uh, these uh, markers on your cpu uh, and the memory uses right uh, so if you do that then also uh, once they cross a threshold for example if you say that um, if my cpu is more than 50% used then scale my application right so those kind of triggers you can configure with hpa so uh, i would configure hpa saying that if the cpu uses on a given set of pods are going beyond 50% then scale my application to more numbers and then scale it down so hpa is doing irrespective of the serverless or not serverless correct uh, but knative would give you additional endpoints or additional facilities uh, which is just built for doing the serverless uh, specialized uh, workloads there so they are kind of going to come uh, together somewhere, but uh, HPA is uh, kind of being built to do any kind of application other than just uh, the uh, just the serverless workload there. Correct. Uh, if anybody has more inputs, uh, do share as well. Mm, any other questions? Hope I answered your question. Answer your question there. Um, correct. Um, okay. So. Um, with that, we are kind of uh, here towards the end of this webinar. Let's see other questions. Yeah, so there are more points what Abhinav has mentioned. Um, any other questions, guys, you have? Um, okay, let me quickly uh, do a quick poll, which I could not do in the beginning. So let me just ask, uh, like, uh, what is the audience uh, what we have here? So let me just quickly uh, do that poll. And if you can just answer that, that would be really helpful. So is this session? No, no. So it's not a, a session which we take daily. Uh, so we have been doing this, um, this particular um, webinar series um, over the last few months. Uh, I think it started in March and we are covering all the building blocks of the cloud. Let me just uh, give the link uh, for the blog, which has all the information. So you can go over it and there are... Um, uh, there are uh, recording of the previous sessions in which we covered uh, other uh, uh, other um, building blocks like virtualization, containers, and so on. Correct. So uh, good. So I think uh, we have the experienced folks as well as the uh, the newbies uh, and mid uh, kind of experienced folks as well. So I'll just put this the lid on the screen. Hope all of you can see that on the screen of yours. Uh, right, this kind of uh, audience uh, poll, what we have done. Let's just do one quick poll as well and then see what kind of future topics uh, you would like to kind of cover in this uh, webinar series um, or in the future one as well. So I'll just launch this. Um, can you see the poll uh, in your screen? Is it coming? The sec sec second one. Second Hello. one, no, I did not get it. Okay, let me just see uh, what happened. I don't know what happened with this. It should have triggered it. Okay, I have to. Okay, I have to stop sharing first. Okay. Okay, I'll go back. Yeah, now I'll do that. Yeah. Now we got.
Okay. Um, I'll just uh, give it a few more seconds. Yeah. Okay, great. So thank you for uh, uh, kind of for your feedback and the topics you want to cover. Let me just look at what topics uh, we want to kind of have here. So Kubernetes tools um, are details to workflow of the pipeline uh, for serverless, um, more real-time deployment uh, as series, uh, how to deploy simple application Kubernetes, uh, less uh, less steps and cost effective Terraform and Sybil that's already come in the next session. Um, and then event architecture with AWS uh, operators. Okay, good. EKS, great. So we have got uh, some inputs. And uh, so in the next uh, webinar, as you know, that we'll be covering Terraform and Ansible. That's the next session. Uh, and post that, we'll be kind of uh, seeing how we can build the entire cloud from scratch. So that's going to be an interesting session. So we have speakers for uh, all of them. And I'll be sharing the recording of this particular uh, meet as well as the details about the upcoming webinar so that you can join in. And of course, go back and uh, look at the, the previous webinars, what we have done and uh, and um, and kind of um, give your feedback, comments. Uh, we'll be more than happy to um, uh, get them and then improvise on this particular event. Um, so I think that's it for today. Hope you uh, like the webinar, got the good content. So I already see that feedback. Uh, a lot of people have given good uh, good feedback on this webinar. Thank you, Vinash, for your time. I really appreciate that uh, you have taken some time to prepare and then give a demo and so on. So uh, thank you again, uh, everybody, for joining in. Um, thank you, Vinash, one more time.